Hello everybody, welcome back to Aurora 4X. Um, I am just starting this recording very shortly after finishing the previous episode. Uh, we were just about to re-engage the Aesolian aliens, and I had a question about uh, electronic intelligence, and I researched it, and uh, I have the answer. So, the strength of my elint uh, on this ship is that I can detect a signature strength of a thousand at about 83, nope, sorry, uh, of a thousand at about 55 million kilometers. Now, they're, uh, they have a much uh, bigger strength, but the, but the key thing here is that for ships, all I'm really going to learn about is their, uh, details on their sensors, on their active sensors, because that's what EM sensors detect. Um, and the rate is like one per day, one intelligence point per day, multiplied by the bonus from your commander. But uh, it also, you need like 100 points to get like a reading on their sensors. And I'm not going to wait 100 days out here and running up my maintenance clock. Um, so uh, I think we'll keep that for later as we orbit the planet. So there, you get information about the planet. Also, it takes, it's like one per day and it takes hundreds of points. But uh, we're going to put that whole uh, notion on the back burner for now. And we're going to go back to what we love to do, which is shoot missiles at aliens. So um, we have five volleys of missiles. I say we just shoot one full volley at each of these ships, at the Spridanov and each of these Chebenenkos. So let's get to it. Um, So uh, let's shoot down the Spruden off first, because I feel like it. Yeah, just making sure that assignment worked. Open fire, assign fleet. OK, let's see if this does anything stupid or if it actually works. It seems to have worked. We've got a number of uh, uh, equipment failures <laughs> that took a bunch of MSB to fix, but that's okay. We fixed it. Um, yeah, that's our full volley. Okay, uh, let's then set the next target, which is going to be the Chabonenko 5. Actually set it here too. Not that it matters. Assign fleet. Good. Uh, let's forward uh, a few minutes into the future until we launch our second volley. So it took about 40, uh, my, my refire rate is about 45 minutes, a little less, 30, somewhere between 40 and 45 minutes. Uh, so let's take, okay, let's set the next target. That was the Chabonenko 5. Let's shoot the next volley at the Chabonenko 6. Make sure it got assigned. It did, good. just go 20 minutes excellent let's now shoot the Chabonenko 7 the Chabonenkos are the ships that shoot anti-missile missiles and uh, we learned the hard way that it was not a good idea to leave a few of them up and standing uh, at the end of the last uh, engagement we had with the aliens. I'm just paranoid for some reason. I thought I, I misclicked this. Nope, we did assign them. Good. Excellent. And finally, the Chabonenko 8. Uh, 
Excellent. Good. All missiles are away. We can now uh, cease fire all. And the timing on that is really good because now we can, I can slow down the time <laughs> uh, reasonably well. So let's definitely move into, uh, like we can do another 20 minute increment here. Again, we, we don't want to cheat past their anti-missile missile fire. So let's go down here to five minutes. And then let me just do a two minute. And let's go down just gradually. Okay, let's do five seconds from now on. Because now we've, uh, we've burst into, uh, we've separated. So this is the final approach on the final stages. Yeah, see, see we're getting AMM fire here, which is what we wanted. And we destroyed him. There was a decent amount of PD here. Uh, I assume from STO based PD uh, designs. And then, although, you know, I no, it just can't be. They can't, they would not make. I have, I've actually n never determined what the uh, uh, the basisti is, but it's got to be a commercial ship. Six, yeah, okay, it is a commercial engine. Good, okay, it's a commercial ship. So it doesn't. I mean, it might have SeaWiz, but I think this energy PD is. Uh, well, actually, we'll see because we got one hundred ninety. Interesting. Okay, so we got 190. Um, oh shit! Wait, sorry, we don't want to make this five seconds. It'll take forever. Um, we got 190 PD shots there. It could be that there's energy PD on the Chabanenkos, but if that's the case, then we should see that number diminish as these volleys uh, destroy the Chabanenkos one after the other. Um, so that'll be something to look out for. Uh, but if not, it's entirely possible that all that PD is on STOs. It's on the ground. Okay, AMM's shooting down some of the missiles. Not enough. Again, sort of 170 roughly in that neighborhood. Um... Not nearly enough to shoot down all the missiles, of course, which is why we uh, successfully destroyed the ship. Uh, let's uh, get the next volley in range. Actually could have clicked five minutes a few more times there, apparently. Should have just measured the distances. Okay, it's actually pretty close. Right. So let's see the number of energy weapon shots. Uh, you can't quite see it here, so let me bring it up on the events screen. 160. I don't think the Chabanenkos have much energy PD. I mean, they might. But there's only two of them left, and we went from 190 to 160. They might have, like, a few guns, but I'm betting most of this PD is coming from the surface.
Okay, let's uh, keep going here. I have to step away for just a moment, but let's wrap up this uh, this barrage. Okay, we got another wreck. Still 161 uh, energy weapon impacts. So yeah, this PD is coming from the planet. Okay, and the last missile barrage. Now, we'll, you know, we could actually, well, I think we'll wait until the missiles reach their targets here. got a the the game sort of paused to give a an update so I wasn't sure what that was about um there we go apparently it was nothing all right you can see that the AMMs have even then on that last run they were quite diminished. They were only shooting down a few missiles each because they're just, there's only one of the AMM shooting ships. Okay, uh, we have basically cleared out the orbit of the planet. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the Uvina fleet. I think it would make sense that we detach the missile destroyers um, and send them back. to the Uvina forward station to refuel and I guess load more ordnance. And then let's move in with the rest of the fleet. And this is the big, uh, this is the big moment here. Um, let's just, I guess we move to, let's, okay, let's do this in two stages. Let's just move to within, like, um, I guess we could move safely within about 300,000. Kilometers, so let's do that. Then we can detach the subfleets later. So let's let's do that in a first. Uh... As our first move here, let's just move in. It'll take about ten hours. Since actually literally nothing can hit me here, we're just going to go in three hour increments. Okay, we, oh, I guess it, it triggered the population contact. We're getting like the thermal signature details here, which is why things keep uh, slowing. So the ground forces signature is 60,000 tons. But if I understand ground combat correctly, uh, they could be very well fortified, which would effectively mask their uh, total signature size. 
So um, it's possible there's a lot more troops on the ground uh, than that sort of initial scan reveals. Okay, so let's get that last, uh, move that last little bit. Okay, we are now orbiting at 300,000 kilometers. Now their weapons range is in the 200... Uh, thousand kilometer range. So what we're going to do is we are going to, I think we just do what the plan was all along, which is move the dropships in. Um, and I think we're going to be very conservative. We're just going to take this, uh, group of dropships, these 10 dropships, they've got a ton of armor. And we're just going to send them to the planet and hope they live. Uh, let's just see what happens, guys. Um, oh, we have to... Right, because I can't drop them until I kind of make it a colony, which is a little weird, I know. But here we go. Uh, so in... No, what am I doing? No. This button. Okay, so in A2... Create colony. Now we should be able to orbital drop all ground units. Okay, um, I am very curious about what is about to happen here. Uh, so let's experience this together. You know what? No, let's save <laughs> first. Always save. All right, I'm really not sure how this is gonna pan out. Um, events, just move these over here. Okay, five seconds. So the drop ships are gonna take about two minutes to get there. That means they could take a number of hits. We just have to hope the armor is going to hold up. There really is no... Like, they might take several hits. This is... That's a problem with uh, doing this with commercial engines. You know, I could have designed... and Maybe I should have designed, like, a higher powered. No. I mean, these are 0.4 engine power, but for them to be commercial engines, they have to be 0.5 power or less. All right, 235, 216, 208, 200, 191, 183, 175, 166, 58, 150. Still no contact. 141, 133. Uh, one thing that occurs to me is it could be that the built-in... So STO units have their own built-in sensors, uh, which might be much lower range than the active sensors. Like, we knocked out all the orbital active sensors, so the ground... The STO guns are relying on their own... Um, on their own active sensors, and those might be of a much shorter range. Question mark? 90,000, 83. Because I'm really not sure why, if they could, they definitely should be firing on these ships. Uh, well, no, Warp 41, we're about to be in, in like, Gauss PD range, so let's see if we could just get sandblasted. No. Okay, that's really weird. If not buggy. 
Uh, okay. Let's see if the drop happens. It hasn't. We're at 120 meters. <laughs> Uh, and I don't think, yeah, we haven't yet actually dropped anything. They're still kind of doing the orbital drop. Orders are complete, which means in theory, these guys have landed. Okay, this is very exciting. So let me, so the field positions are all set. They were set previously and they've been dropped correctly. Now, I guess ground combat is just gonna happen. Let's go to uh, a Solian here. Which would be not. Actually, it wouldn't even be in. Here we go. A Solian A2. This shows everything that's currently on the ground. No, this is, no, this, it's in the order of battle. I was right, it was in the order of battle. These are my units. Okay, they're, it, they do appear to be all there. Interesting, we don't know any of these details. I've just never done this on an alien planet, so I'm just kind of clicking these things just out of curiosity. Okay. I mean, I guess that's it. We dropped. Um, the field position is set. Let's uh, take the drop ships and have them rejoin Uvina Fleet 2. And let's just see. Now, battle happens in, like, hours increments. So I just wanted to... Like, I don't know when the next increment is going to happen. So let's, uh, let's move forward in... Um... Okay, let's, let's have the dropships rejoin the fleet. That'll interrupt us. Good, they've rejoined. And let's go forward, like, an hour... I assume we're going to get a report when anything happens. I can't remember if it's three or eight hours. So we're just going to play this cool. So this has been three hours. Uh, I guess it's eight hour increments, but it could be any time in the next eight hours. So let's see. Oh, you know, there's something... Wait, there is some, well, okay, there's something I, I would like to try while we're here, which is, uh, no, not Istio targeting, but, um, All right, there is a little weird thing. I guess I do want to check. Let's let me just check something real quick here. Let's take a resolute frigate, detach it, and have it go right up into orbit. So you're you're kind of a sacrificial lamb here. I apologize. I want to see if it gets shot at, and if not. 
that's weird. It's almost kind of bugged. I'm not sure what the reason would be why it would not get shot. So it's not getting shot at. Now, because I wanted to provide orbital bombardment support. So what we're going to do is we're going to have you uh, rejoin Uvina Fleet 2. Let's just do that real quick. And then let's have... Did we... Yeah, okay. Oh, that's weird. Where did the ship go? There it is. Okay. Let's have you go here. Let's remove this last order. Now, this is kind of cheating a little bit in that I feel that they should be shooting at me and they're not shooting at me. But... Um, since they're not, this gives us an opportunity to test the orbital bombardment. Uh, so let's do that. Oh, we're moving with all the dropships. That's why it's so slow. Okay. Now... In theory, you know, let me just pause this just for a moment. I need to go check something. Okay, I'm back. So uh, I just, the, the ships are supposed to appear here. And as you see, they do now. But I just have to update the time increment <laughs> for them to actually appear. And the other thing I've done, which I hadn't done before, is I linked the artillery and the logistics and the command divisions, all of which have heavy artillery, to support uh, the mechanized infantry deployments, uh, which have the FFD elements. But in addition, we're also going to take uh, the export um, ships, the ones that have the guns, the main guns, and we're going to have them uh, do more support uh, with their particle guns. And in fact, let's... Um, Oh, that's interesting. You could also do it like that. You can drag and drop, but you could also do it uh, like this. But I'll just drag and drop here. Um, so each FFD can support a ship. And I've got uh, a bunch of FFD. So I should be able to handle a number of ships here. And the reason I'm assigning it to these guys Oh, you know what? Actually, no, that doesn't make sense. I should spread them out between all the uh, mechanized infantry because I had the artillery supporting the other two, but the artillery doesn't take FFD capacity. So we can actually use these FFD elements to use all these laser guns from space. These are my PD lasers, but uh, might as well use them. Again, I'm not sure why they're not shooting up at me, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Okay, that's been set. Let's, uh, let's keep going here in time. Okay. Ah, uh, shit just happened. <laughs> All right. Whoa, look at that. All right. Let's let's just start reading through this, guys. This is the first time for all of us. Okay, so estimated hostile forces, error range, we don't know, unknown unit types, a lot of them. A few maintenance issues. <laughs> Um, okay, so, and, you know, as our guns were shooting. So let's see. Element versus some ground unit here. So the 69th 
armored assault deployment, heavy assault tank, first Praetorian combat mech, shots 108, hits 29, eight, armor penetrated 3, destroyed 0. Uh, again, heavy assault tank, shots penetrated, you know, we're getting destroyed 0, destroyed 0, oh, destroyed 26, so here... So remember that our heavy assault tank is actually designed to kill units mostly. Now they've got resupply infantry. We didn't kill any. We killed a couple Decurion AA mechs. No, we didn't. We just uh, penetrated a bit of armor. But here, we actually shot a ton of this infantry, which is exactly what this tank is made to kill. And we destroyed 26. So that's good. Then our anti-tank shot a combat mech destroyed it. We destroyed... The anti-tank also destroyed um, some uh, centurions, which I assume is infantry. An AA mech didn't destroy any. Didn't destroy any. So this is our... Uh, we, there's a bit of infantry in each of our... in our HCAP. Uh, there's a bit of HCAP, sorry, in even in our armored assault. So this is all the 69th. So the 69th did a bunch of destruction. Then the 70th killed more Centurions. Let's see, we destroyed some resupply infantry, more Centurions, a combat mech. Got shot by a, a half tank. And that's it for the 70th. So these are the armored assaults. Now, my 75th mech infantry is mostly H cap, so let's see. We killed a bunch of resupply infantry, we killed five of them. We killed a ton of centurions, 810 shots, <laughs> killed 63. We killed a combat mech, destroyed more centurions, an AA mech, another combat mech. And that's pretty much it for the 75th. The 76th destroyed a bunch of Centurions, some resupply infantry, another combat mech. Uh, that's it for the 76th. The 77th destroyed a whole pile of Centurions, 103. One, five... That's the 78th. Okay. Then the 85th Division Command uh, Static Heavy Artillery. So we're supporting the mech infantry. So we had a bit of uh, a heavy bombardment. So they shot 33 times. They destroyed one thing. Oh, they destroyed some Centurions. But that's about it. Uh, the Logistics Support did not destroy anything. Now the heavy artillery support uh, had a few more shots. They destroyed 14 centurions and this other heavy artillery uh, support destroyed another 19 centurions, also two AA mechs and three combat mechs and an additional resupply infantry. Then we have orbital uh, bombardment support. So from orbit, uh, the export 11 shot and killed a, a centurion, but didn't kill the uh, combat mech. And then the resolutes didn't kill much, but a couple of them, like we killed a combat mech here, apparently. Again, volume of fire here. <laughs> killed a centurion, killed another centurion, killed another centurion, and another centurion. So that's nice. Okay, uh, then now this is interesting because this is attack report. It's not clear to me why. Uh, 
I this is the first time I'm reading this, so I'm not 100 percent sure. So this is attack. This is element versus GUC. Here we have GUC versus GUC. Here we have attack versus GUC. So I gotta say I'm not super clear. I guess it's just breaking it down, and these are summaries. So I guess in total, we destroyed 412 Centurions, 27 Resupply Infantry, 10 Praetorian Combat Mechs, and 2 Decurion AA Mechs. Um, and I guess by formation, the armored assaults each killed about 40, you know, 20 to 40, and then the mechanized infantry actually killed a lot more. Then they shoot at us. Let's actually go in, we're gonna lose, we're gonna go down here to see how much we lost. Actually, it'll be easier to say. Okay, so losses suffered in total Not by formation, but in total, we lost 873 H cap, 90, Jesus, 92 half tanks, 30 FFDs, 22 heavy assault tanks, 17 light logistics, constructions, and a heavy HQ. So it looks like we took a lot more damage here. Um, okay, let's take a look here in the ground elements to see what happened. So if we look in total, uh, our total size, we landed with like 100k, and now we're at 66k. So we just lost a third of our um, of our strength <laughs> in that first round of combat. So just in terms of rough numbers. Um, let's actually look at the alien intelligence here, known ground unit classes. So we know Okay, so we actually we let's uh we know a lot about these guys now. So this is actually a good opportunity to compare uh, our tech to their tech. Uh, so let's just do that quickly. So we have okay. So their basic uh, soldier is the Centurion, which has an armor of ten, hit points ten, and a weapon is uh, six shots, twelve pen, twelve damage. We are using H cap. Uh, which is armor of 20, hit points of 10, uh, 6 shots, 12 pen, 8 damage, 6 shots, 12 pen, but they have 12 damage, so their weapons do more damage. Then they have an AA mech, which is just an AA unit. Now their combat mech, this is interesting, so a medium vehicle, armor strength of 40, and it's got... Uh, a 61212, and it's got a 14848, uh, which is, oops, I didn't mean to minimize that. Uh, that's going to be similar to, yeah, a heavy anti vehicle. Well, they have the ex almost the exact same kind of thing, although we have auto cannons here, whereas they have another uh, uh, cap gun. And then. Yeah, those are their two kinds of, uh, and then this is, I guess, their HQ units. Okay, cool, interesting. So, 
So, uh, if we look at, okay, let's look at our order of battle now. So if we look at the 69th Armored Assault, uh, it has been reduced in number. We have the HQ. We still have heavy assault tanks and whatnot. We've just uh, lost a few. If we compare to, um, by the way, this is like a fresh battalion. We're supposed to have 50 uh, heavy tanks and 40 half tanks and then 24 H cap. So we lost all the H cap and we lost a number of half tanks. Similar here. Uh, then if we look at the mech infantry, we have 275 in a unit and then like 20 half tanks. So this unit here got demolished. Uh, but this unit still standing strong, almost this unit also got wrecked. Okay, so I think what we need to do here is we need to consolidate. Also, let's check this logistics. Barely got touched. Yeah, the artillery didn't get touched. Okay, so I think what we can do here is I think we can consolidate these guys. So the 76th is fine, but these three kind of got wrecked. No, I don't want to support... Uh, that's not quite what I wanted to do. What I want to do is, I think we can just move the elements. Uh, let's consolidate everything into the 70... 78th. Let's see if we can do that. I don't, I think there is a way of doing this. I'm not sure what it is. So I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna figure this out. I'll be right back. Okay, it was just like drag and drop and for some reason I wasn't clicking properly or whatever, but uh, we got it fixed. So I moved everything I could back into this element. Um, what we are going to do now as well is we are going to drop the rest of the troops because I think uh, the idea here would be that, um, you know, uh, this time, now that we have like sort of solid leadership, we have to succeed at all costs. So it's not clear to me that we're actually winning <laughs> this ground war at all. Um, that's one thing I'd like to try to determine here is I don't know, relatively speaking, how much of their stuff we killed. Um, And I bet we didn't kill enough. Like, I bet they're killing more of our stuff than we are killing of theirs. But uh, let's uh, see if we can... I think role-playing-wise, it would make sense that we would kind of double down. Okay, so we did the orbital drop. We should have done the orbital drop, so let's see if this has refreshed here. Yeah. So uh, let's get these guys. In here. Mechanized inf infantry. Uh, you can just be frontline defense. That's okay. And then you guys should be in Support. And I guess you can support the 95th. Oh, also, I think we lost all our FFD in the other units, so everybody has to now support the uh, 95th, right? Yeah, these guys are... Uh, 
this formation can be deleted. This one is now empty. Yeah, the only FFD left is in the 95th, so we have to have all these guys support the 95th. I mean, only 10 ships can can actually support. Oh, it actually tells us, which is really cool. Okay. Um, and let's have this guy on forward attack as well. Um, field position. Frontline attack. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see what happens in another few hours. Oh, wait. Ooh, something. What? All right, these commercial ships are uh, running away. They're going somewhere. Probably to jump somewhere. So what we're going to do, I think this would be really cool, is we're going to send uh, the capital let's send the capital and five ships and you guys go follow this contact. But let's not follow. They might have CWIS, so let's follow them at 50. Let's follow them at 60,000 kilometers. Let's see where they're going. We could destroy them any time, but they're probably going to reveal a jump point for us, is what I'm thinking. Okay, it looks like they've stopped. And they've started again. And they've stopped again. They just can't quite decide what to do. It's a little awkward, guys. Come on, make up your minds. Let's change the orders of this fleet. I wonder if, because we're following too closely, they're kind of freaking out. Uh, so let's follow them at like uh, a million kilometers. I think a ground combat is about to happen. Okay, uh, let's just look at the summaries. Interesting, so this time... So we destroyed 190 Centurions, 14 combat mechs. Uh, compared to last time, Incidentally, let's see if we still... Oh, we don't have it. Well, I mean, I could find it, but whatever. But this time, we only, big air quotes here, lost 275 HCAP. A lot of, a lot of logistics here. 
I guess we lost less, but proportionately it might be more. <laughs> let's let's see if we can figure this out here. Um, in total, yeah, we're down to we lost like the same amount of stuff, basically the same tonnage of stuff. Um, no, 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 because that's HP. We lost, okay, but we still lost it because we reinforced with 30,000 tons and we're back up to 72. So we lost another 30,000 tons. It's just this time it was more vehicles. So let's look at the individual, um, you know, uh, the individual components here. So the 77th got wrecked. The 69th is also pretty wrecked. And geez, the 95th also got smashed. And the 94th logistics got smashed too. So I think we need to take the, uh... all right, so the 77th is completely destroyed. We need to roll it into the 79th. And same thing here with the 95th. Um... Command division is still doing fine. And then the 94th here, this can just go into here. And then our armored divisions uh, look like they're OK. Let's see, 69th, 70th, and 71st. How are we doing? 69th. 69th is looking a little soft. Let's uh let's fold it into the seventieth. And yeah. Then let's delete 69th here. Uh, the 94th and the 95th. And the 77th. Okay, now we basically can no longer do orbital bombardment support because we no longer have any FFD, uh, which is interesting. All right, let's, uh, I'm gonna play this out. We need to learn more about how this works. Oh, let me bring up my events here. Just gonna keep track of those guys is trying to escape there. combat this time or next time this time okay uh, let's take a look here at what happened
Wow, I didn't I didn't notice this. This is at the first and this estimated hostile force. This is a key piece of information uh, that we should have paid attention to. Uh, but we have now. So that's really important. So we're going to look at that in our analysis right now. But first of all, let's look at ground attack summary. We still killed 137 Centurions and a few combat mechs. Uh, and we lost... Huh. We did not lose that much. Interesting. Okay, but... But, guys. So we really didn't lose much this time. Now, all right, here's... Uh, we can start kind of measuring things. Um... I think we can say that their centurions are roughly equivalent to our H cap. So uh, if we look at how much H cap we have in total, first of all, I wonder if we can do that easily. Oh yeah, complete organization unit list. We have 555 H cap, and they have. So this is like infantry, and they have 2,000, <laughs> more than 2,000. Now, well, our estimate now is you know 2,200, but last time we fought, our estimate was uh, a little less. So they have a little over 2,000, and then we estimate they have about 312. Uh, combat mechs, and their combat mechs are like our half tanks. Okay, and so their combat mechs, we estimate they have about 300. Now, how many half tanks do we have? Uh, half tanks, we've got 97. Now, we have 111 heavy assault tanks. These kind of are, are strong, and we also have 184 static artillery. But it seems clear to me that we don't quite have the numbers to pull this off now, but that with more numbers, we could pull it off. So, um... You know, we've been killing reliably several hundred. We've been destroying several hundred units. Like two, let's see, this time we got 137 and change. Let's call it 150. And here, we got about 200. Obviously, we're getting fewer and fewer as our forces diminish, but we are able to knock like a few hundred off each time. Their units aren't in the tens of thousands. They're in like 2,000 range. So this is quite possible. And now we lost, um, you know, a lot of H cap. You know, it depends what element they're able to target. Um, but I feel... All right, I feel this is something we could pull off, but we need more. <laughs> we need more guys, more guns. Because the problem is if we stay now, as we're both causing attrition, but we have just fewer numbers. And we got, I think, really lucky in the last combat round. Um, in fact, let's take a look. What happened in the last combat round? Why didn't we lose so much stuff? Um, let's see if we can figure that out. Um, it is not clear to me 
why only the 70th uh, was targeted. Because the 71st is also on attack. So maybe it was just luck that they were the ones that got targeted and they just kind of got wrecked. Um, so I think what we're going to try to do, we're going to try to extricate ourselves. We're going to try to evacuate back to the dropships. Uh, and for that to happen, we need to redistribute it. We need to take some stuff from the 76th. And maybe we'll put it in the 70th. Uh, just a little bit of stuff. How about we take the... Uh, the heavy tanks. Perfect. Let's have Fleet 2 with the dropships. And everybody load ground units, load all the subunits, like so. And uh, let's see how long it'll take to actually load these units up. And then I think that'll be the end of the episode. You know, we, it takes uh, a bit of time for the shuttles to load everything up. So that's certainly a concern. And I don't know if we can evacuate all the troops before the next combat round. That would certainly be tragic. Oh, good. We got them. Nice. Okay, excellent. All right, so I think that's going to be it for now. So what we're going to do is I think this can kind of work um, in the medium term. Uh, we're just going to have to bring a ton more dudes. Uh, so And who knows, we might bring fighter pods too if we can build something in time. Um, I'll think about that. Anyways, uh, this was informative for me, and I'll also look over some of these events and... and think more about our ground units and go into a bit more detail, but I gotta, I gotta sort of analyze that and understand it better myself. So thanks for watching. See you guys later. Take care.